All right, welcome back. Today, we will finally figure out how to deliver some mail. The first step is to generate what Laravel calls a mailable. PHP, artisan, make, mail. And what should it be named? Well, let's imagine that you're an employer, and after you have published a new job to our website, we want to send you a confirmation email. All right, so why don't we say job posted? Okay, so now notice it's in a new app mail directory. Let's have a look. All right, open the sidebar, and sure enough, app mail job posted. Okay, let's have a look. I think you're going to like this. It's fairly intuitive. Now, first step, if you want to send an email, you have to effectively fill out the envelope. And this is where you would provide the subject of the email, uh, potentially who it's to, who it's from, a reply to, uh, tags that can be associated with the email provider. And you can find a whole list of uh, available parameters in the constructor here. But yeah, most of the time, subject, maybe reply to, maybe from uh, are the fields you will reach for. All right, next we have content. Provide the content for the view. So notice we return a new instance of this content class, and we pass the name of a view. All right, let's do that now. Let's go into resources, view, and let's create a new directory for emails or mail, whatever you want. I will stick with mail. Now within here, I'm going to create a simple blade view. Job posted.blade.php. Congrats, your job is now live on our website. And we'll leave it at that for now. But yeah, later we, we could embellish it, provide more specifics about uh, the job itself, maybe provide a link to the job page. All of that is available here. Okay, so let's go back to our mailable. And now I can update this to mail.jobposted. Finally, if you have any attachments, you can provide them here. Otherwise, this looks pretty good to me right now. So I'd like to see how this email looks. Uh, how do I test it? Well, here's a cool thing. If we go back to our routes file, while we are still playing around, I could create a dummy route. I'll do it right up here. Route get, I will call it test. And yeah, what's cool is all I have to do is return a new instance of our mailable class. So if I return new job posted, there we go. That's it. It'll work. Let's have a look in the browser. Let's go to example.test slash test. And there we go. We see the body of our email. Cool. All right, next up, let's send it. To send a mailable, I can use the mail facade, illuminate support facades mail. I specify who it's to. So why don't we just say jeffrey at laracas.com, and then I'm going to send our mailable. So new job posted. And then I will say return done, just to provide some quick feedback. But keep in mind, we're still in a local environment, and we haven't yet set up any kind of uh, email provider or an SMTP server. So that means when I send this email, it's not actually going to jeffrey at laracast.com. It's just being logged to a file. All right, so back to the browser. Once again, we will visit that test endpoint. It says done. So now it should be logged to a file. I'll show you how to check it. Open your sidebar and head to the storage directory, logs, and you'll see by default a laravel.log file. And sure enough, we can see the, the makeup and the body of our email. Notice it was sent here. The from address is the default, and I'll show you how to configure that in a moment. And then, of course, we have the body of our email. It works. Very cool. Now, check this out. If I go into config mail... As you can guess, shocker, this is where we configure our mail settings. So for example, uh, how are we going to deliver this email? Do we just log it to a file? Do we use a specific API? Is there an SMTP server? Uh, Laravel supports many things here. Next, we can configure how we're going to send it. So here are our SMTP settings. Uh, if you want to use a dedicated uh, SAS like Postmark, uh, by the way, that's what I use for Laracast. Or you could use SendMail or um, Mailgun. There's so many. You can set them here. Next, we have the global from address. And notice uh, for most of these, they reference an environment variable, but then as the second argument, we have a default if that environment variable has not been set. So notice mail from address, but defaults to hello at example.com. And sure enough, if I switch back, that's the default email because we didn't override it. So you have two choices. One, 
If we switch back to our mail configuration file, yeah, you could just overwrite that directly here. So I could say from would be info at layertest.com or something like that. Or, uh, and this is fine, but I would say generally I prefer to configure these things from my environment file. So it looks like we have a from address and a from name. So let's go to the project roots. At the very bottom, I will open .env. And yeah, we've covered this a little bit, but again, for a quick review, this is where you define all of the settings and keys for your application in the current environment. So keep this in mind, we're not gonna commit this. So when you push your project up to production, you will create another environment file where many of these settings will be swapped out. So for example, in a local environment, app env is set to local, but in my production environment, of course, it'll be set to production. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay. So anyways, if we scroll down, I can see some settings for mail. And sure enough, Laravel has already defined these. So I'm going to overwrite this. It's now going to be info at laracast.com. And from name, how about Luke? All right, that's it. So let's switch back to the browser and try to deliver this email a second time. Back to the browser, I will simply command R to refresh. Okay. Back to our Laravel.log file. And here's the second one. Now notice that we have updated the global from address. Okay. But now, yeah, I just want to make sure this is all clear. If I go back to our mailable, if you prefer, or in situations where you want to override the from address, you can set it here. So maybe in this situation, I want it to be from admin at laracast.com. And then maybe I want the reply to uh, to be different. You can override these on a per mailable basis. Okay, so one more time, refresh, switch back, go to laravel.log. Here's the third email, but this time it didn't use the global default. Uh, it used what we provided in the mailable. All right, next up, let's make this a little bit more real life. Now, there's a bunch of different services we can play around with, but one that I really like is called MailTrap. So mailtrap.io. You can sign up for free, but I already have an account, so I will log in. All right, let's start testing. I'm gonna create an inbox, and I will call it Laracas. Let's open the inbox. Now, once emails start coming in, you will see them here. But yeah, over to the right, we can see integrations, and there should be one for Laravel. And yeah, all we have to do is provide these uh, configuration settings. So I will copy that back to the browser, open your environment file and the project root, and I can paste these in. Okay, so notice, yeah, let's review the difference. By default, the mailer is set to log, but now we're changing it to SMTP. The host is now sandbox.mailtrap.io. The port is 2525, no change there. We've provided a username and password, and then everything else can be the same. Okay. Let's try to send that email again, and this time it won't be logged, it will be sent to MailTrap. Let's open a new tab, example.test slash test. Ah, and yeah, notice it took a second or two, and that's because, once again, it takes a bit of time to deliver this email, and that's something you should be aware of. Okay, so if I switch back, sure enough, we have our email, and here's the body. Congrats, your job is now live on our website. Okay, so now let's integrate some real data. I want to learn information about the actual job that was created, as well as a link to view the job. So let's do this. Within my routes file, I'm done testing, but I want to reuse this section here, so I will cut it for later. All right, next, let's go into job controller, and after we publish a new job, yeah, right down here, we can deliver that email. So I will paste it in. And then, of course, we will clean up and import those. Okay, mail to, but now I'm still hard coding my own name, which doesn't make sense. We should send this email to the person who created the job. But you'll remember, a job belongs to an employer and the employer belongs to a user. So if I switch back, what we could do is say, save this to a variable and then update it to job, employer, user. Yeah, so notice in this case, I could say give me their email address, but Laravel's pretty smart. If we feed it a user instance, Laravel is smart enough to grab the email address off of that object. All right, next I should import this as well. And then I will pass in the job instance to the constructor of our mailable. Public job, like so. Uh, now here's a really important thing to understand. Inside of your mailable class, 
all public properties are instantly available within your view. So here I'm injecting it and setting it to a public property, but also I could do something like this, foo equals bar. So in this scenario, inside of my mail.job hosted view, I will now have access to a job uh, variable as well as a foo variable. So if you have situations where you don't want it in your view, then of course you would need to make it protected. Okay, so what about situations where you do want to inject uh, a job, but you don't want to pass the full job instance to your view? Well, again, in these situations, right down here, and as the second parameter, I can set width equal to an array of values to pass through. So yeah, this would be an alternative way to do it. Uh, if I want to send only the title of the job, I could say this, job title, and then I would just make sure right up here that uh, when I inject job, I make it something that is not public. But yeah, in our case, I'm fine with uh, passing job to the view. Sorry, we'll get rid of this entirely. And now let's update the view. Job hosted. Why don't we wrap all of this within a paragraph? We'll have a link here. View your job listing. And then I will set the href to jobs slash job ID. But keep in mind, when the user receives this email, they're not on your website. So you need to provide the full URL. We actually want example.test slash jobs slash job ID. So in these situations, you can update it to URL to jobs slash job ID. Yeah, if we command click here, that will generate a URL for the application and you'll see what shape that takes shortly. Finally, maybe at the top, uh, it's not gonna look super pretty, but maybe within an H2, we will have the title of your job. All right, and I think that's enough for an example. Let's send the email again. All right, back to our project. I will need to log in. All right, John will create a new job. Laracas video producer pays 90,000 per year. Save it. That will persist it in the database. Notice it took a second or so, but I can see it here. And now if we switch back to MailTrap, sure enough, we have a confirmation email. But yeah, sure enough, we have the title of the job. Congrats, your job is now live. View it, and if I click on it, notice it takes me to that full URL to our project. And by the way, what's useful about that is URL will work for your local environment as well as your production environment. All right, so that's a wrap for our mail lesson, at least mostly. Now, you'll remember I kept bringing up the fact that it does take a bit of time to deliver an email, and in a production environment, that's even longer. So yeah, if you think about it, it's just not practical to make the user wait two, three, maybe four seconds for an email to send. I'm waiting! When on top of that, they may not even know you're delivering them an email. They're just publishing a job. They don't know that as part of that request, you're also preparing and firing off an email. So yeah, we don't wanna do this. So we can improve performance by instead throwing the email onto what's known as a queue. And if you don't know what a queue is, then of course you're in luck because that is the topic of tomorrow's lesson. So I'll see you then.